good afternoon class welcome to today's science lesson and in today's science lesson we are going to dwell on circulatory system and uh, we shall remind ourselves where we began on circulatory system Rem we shall remind a few things and then we shall continue with structure and functions of the heart. When we talked of circulatory system, we said that a uh, circulatory system in human beings consists of the following. We named the blood, we also named blood vessels, and we also said the heart. We said whenever we are talking about circulatory system in human beings, then we should know that we are going to discuss about the blood, the blood vessels, and the heart. So we went ahead and mentioned the types, or uh, the four components of blood. We know that uh, blood is uh, a transport liquid in the body made up of four components. And we went ahead to mention these components of blood. We mentioned plasma. We also mentioned the red blood cells. When we mentioned plasma, we said plasma is majorly the liquid substance that is responsible for transportation of, dig of digested food substances and hormones that are within the body, plus also the waste products that are within the body. We also mentioned the red blood cells, and we said red blood cells are known for transportation of oxygen. Oxygen is transported to different parts of, of the body tissues, and uh, it enables that activity called respiration to take place. From red blood cells, which has that red pigment called uh, hemoglobin, it enables it to transport um, oxygen in plenty. And we also said the structure of red blood cells it does not have the nucleus. We talked about that. And we also mentioned white blood cells. We said white blood cells they have nucleus, they are reclaim shape. And their major functions is to engulf, to fight, to protect the body, to kill the antigens that try to attack the body. So white blood cells are there to fight the germs that are trying to invade that particular cell to invade the body. So white blood cells are known as soldiers of the body. We also talked of platelets and we said platelets are there to ensure that uh, in case you have a wound, in case there is a, a problem, you, have, you injure yourself, then it assists, it assists in the clotting of blood to prevent further germs entering the body. Now, from the blood cells, we went ahead and mentioned about the blood vessels. Yes, we mentioned about the red blood cells. We had said that uh, we know the functions of the red, red blood cells, and we said the major function of red blood cells is to transport oxygen from different parts of the body and so forth. Then uh, we came now, after mentioning the, the components of blood, the red blood cells, the plasma, the platelets, and the white blood cells, we went ahead and also saw the types of blood vessels and their functions. And when we came to the types of blood vessels and the functions, we mentioned the arteries. We mentioned the arteries and we said, uh, we mentioned the arteries, we mentioned also the veins, and we also mentioned the capillaries. When we mentioned the, when we mentioned the arteries, we said arteries are known to carry blood away from the heart. So the major functions of the arteries, we said it is to carry, to carry uh, blood away from the heart. With only an exception of pulmonary artery, uh, with the exception of only pulmonary artery. So we said that the major functions of arteries is to carry the blood away from the heart. And then we went ahead and said that also arteries carry 
oxygenated blood. They carry oxygenated blood with only exceptions of pulmonary artery, we mentioned that. And we also, we also said the characteristics of artery, they have a narrow lumen and they have thick wall that are strong within the skin, within the body, they are located towards inside of the body, and like the veins which are located close to the surface of the skin. And then uh, we, we said that uh, the blood flows through the arteries, in, through, through arteries in high pressure. There's high pressure because the way the heart is pumping, we also say the arteries have uh, pulse, they have pulse you can feel on your wrist. If you touch on your wrist, you find that uh, they are pumping, you can either feel on the wrist or they, have, they just pump. They just, if you feel your wrist, you'll feel the pulse that I'm talking about. Then when we came to the veins, we said veins carry blood from body parts to the heart. That's the work of the veins. Uh, of course, with the exception of uh, uh, the pulmonary vein, with the, with, no, all veins carry blood. Uh, they, carry, they, they, they carry the blood towards the heart. That's what the vein does. And they, most of them carry deoxygenated blood. They carry blood that is rich in carbon dioxide with the exceptions of pulmonary vein, that, that, the one that carries blood now uh, from the lungs back uh, uh, to the to the heart. We mentioned about the veins, the characteristics of veins. We say the veins have valves. The, the, they have very thin wall. They have valves. Valves are there to prevent the blood from, flow, from flowing backwards. When we talk about the pressure, pressure in the veins is very low. And we said when we talk of the lumen, uh, with the, uh, the difference with the lumen compared to the arteries is the lumen is wide. When you compare the lumen the lumen of vein is wide as compared to the lumen of the arteries. And then uh, we went ahead and uh, mentioned about capillaries, and we said capillaries are, thin, are very thin walled, they are single-celled wall, and we said they are tiny, but they serve as interconnection point. They connect the, the arteries and the veins, and they are made in a such a way that a gas has exchange, and also the digested food are uh, able to get absorbed in the body, in the, in, in the blood, and so forth. So we mentioned what capillaries are, the functions of the capillaries, how they serve us, and the interconnection between arteries and capillaries. Now, today, we want to pay attention on the structure and functions of the heart. We have been talking about the arteries, we have been talking about the veins, all these vessels they lead to the heart. Heart is pumping blood to the arteries. Heart is receiving blood from, from, the vein, from the veins and so forth. We want to see the structure and functions of the heart. Of what the mentioning, we said what is the heart? We said the heart is the muscular organ situated in the chest cavity. So if you have a chest, on towards your left side of your chest is where we have an organ called the heart. And if you touch the, your, 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 your chest, you will feel the heart is drumming. It is the heartbeat. You will be able to feel the pulse or the heartbeat that showing that uh, the heart is functioning. If the heart ceases to function, then that living organism or if it's a human being, then he ceases to live, is pronounced dead. If the heart ceases to function, then uh, that is a, a process of dying. But we know that uh, when the mind is completely out of, is when we say you are completely dead. We know if the heart stops functioning, there are times the doctors will step in to jumpstart the heart and so forth. Well, that is a process, but what we know, if the heart stops pumping, then oxygen will not be pumped to us many parts of the body. If it is the brain, the brain will die if it does not receive enough oxygen and so forth. So the heart is a very important organ in the human body. So if it ceases to function, then that human being, that living thing or the living organism now also can be pronounced dead. We are also saying the heart receives and pumps blood to all parts of the body. So the heart receives blood through maybe veins, and it pumps blood to many parts of the body through the arteries. Then we are also saying 
the heart also is subdivided into two. One, it is subdivided into the right side and also subdivided into right side. So the heart, we have the right side and the left side. So that we can be able to further discuss the parts of human heart, we shall have a simple structure of how the heart is. And we shall be able to see a simple structure of how the heart is and be able to see the major arteries that joins the heart and the major uh, veins that to, do join the heart. Then we shall see the flow of blood, how the flow, how the blood flows in through the uh, the vena cava and then is pumped uh, through the pulmonary artery to the lungs and then from the lungs the heart goes back. The blood, the blood goes back to the heart through the pulmonary vein and then is pumped out through the otter to the many parts of the body. So to have this uh, simple structure of the heart uh, we can have things like so. We shall see that one looks like the heart. And then uh, one side is a bit muscular uh, uh, when it comes. Uh, we, and then uh, the heart, we had said that is, is subdivided into left and right. But also the heart has got four chambers. The upper chamber, we have the left, uh, the left, uh, we have the we have the right auricle and the left auricle, and also we have the right uh, ventricle and the left ventricle. We shall be able to display these uh, chambers, and then uh, we shall be able to display them. Uh, We shall be able to display this and uh, and be able to show how these organs uh, yes, and then uh, from this one it goes. So these are part of the veins, and uh, it's important we capture what we call important. The heart. Uh, The heart goes like so, then from here. We have tried to show some chambers. We shall be able to indicate which is the right auricle and uh,
therefore, um, you can see this is what we have here is uh, the uh, same. Valves are located here. There's another valve for key. Then we have, um, as we can see, um, a slight diagram of an organ called a human heart. I will try to explain the four chambers of a human heart. There is a first chamber, uh, this place where they are responding. That one is called the right africo. And there's a left chamber, this one is called the left aurico. We had said that there are two sides of a heart, the left side and the right side. Then after getting the left side and the right side, dividing the heart into two, the heart itself is subdivided further into four chambers. We are saying the first chamber is the right auricle, the second chamber is the right ventricle, uh, ventricle. then we have also the left ventricle and also the left auricle. Now we want to explain the process of how the heart, the blood reaches the heart, how the blood leaves the heart, how the blood comes again back to the heart, and how again the blood leaves the heart to other parts of the body. So we want to explain that uh, the blood comes into the, into the heart via this uh, uh, vena cava, that is a vena cava, this opening, that is the main uh, vein. So through the main vein called the vena cava, then the blood that is in plenty, it has a lot of carbon dioxide, is pumped, it comes into the heart. So we are seeing vena cava being the main vein, it brings back, it brings blood that has a lot of carbon dioxide inside this first right auricle. Then from the right auricle, the red auricle, the blood is pumped, is pumped to this left ventricle. Then from the left ventricle, the blood goes out via this valve so that it will not come back again. It goes out through this, via these valves, through out, out of the, uh, out, out of the, that is right ventricle. It passes through the artery. From the pulmonary artery, the blood is goes to the lungs. Now the blood that is going to the lungs, it has a lot of carbon dioxide gas. But now when this blood reaches the lungs, then the lungs are able to remove that carbon dioxide gas from the blood and that is what we shall breathe out because the lungs will be able to trap that carbon dioxide, take it to the alveoli, alveoli then to the to the bronch bronchioles, from the bronchioles to the bronchus, and then to the trachea, to the nostrils, to the nasal cavity nostrils, and then we shall be able to breathe out that carbon dioxide gas. But other blood that, because inside the lungs we have uh, oxygen, the air that uh, has more oxygen, the blood is supplied with the more air sacs, bl blood air sacs, it is able to trap more oxygen, and the blood that has trapped more oxygen, now it travels from the lungs now back to the heart. Now it will now come back to the heart, it will use the pulmonary vein. 
Now, pulmonary vein will bring in oxygenated blood to the left auricle. So the left auricle will receive blood from the lungs that has more oxygen than the blood that was going there through the right artery, the pulmonary artery. So when, it, when the blood now comes in through the pulmonary vein, it is more disoxygenated blood. This blood is pumped from now the right auricle to the left ventricle. The left ventricle, we have said, it has got thick muscles. The, it has got thick muscles because now it is going to pump this blood via the otter to other parts of the body now. So we are seeing the blood goes through the heart twice. One, the blood is received through the vena cava vein which a lot of carbon dioxide gas, that blood is sent to the lungs for purification so that this carbon dioxide is removed from the blood. Then the blood that is coming out from now, the lungs has a lot of oxygen. Oxygen it, that blood now enters the heart through the pulmonary vein, then it is pumped out to other parts of the body via the otter. And we are saying the otter is the main artery of the body. The otter is the main artery of is the main is the main artery of the body. We have more many arteries, but otter is the main artery. We have many veins, but the vena cava vein is the main vein of the of, of, of the heart. Now we want to explain uh, parts of this human heart from the structure that is here. We have said that the heart is made up of four chambers, the ones we have indicated, one, two, three, four. The heart is made up of four chambers. Two on upper chambers are called auricles. So these two are called auricles in the upper chamber, the upper section of the heart. They are called auricles. And then the two in the lower chambers are called ventricles. The two in the lower chambers, these are the ones we are calling ventricles. That's okay. Then we are saying the right auricle receives oxygenated blood from the body. The right auricle, this is the right auricle. We are saying the right auricle receives deoxygenated blood from the body. So this, the right auricle, receives deoxygenated blood from the body. It receives blood from the body that has a lot of carbon dioxide gas. So it receives deoxygenated blood from the body. Then we are saying the right ventricle pumps deoxygenated blood to the lungs. We are saying this one, the right ventricle now pumps the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. It is pumping this, this deoxygenated blood to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. It is pumping this deoxygenated blood from the, from, from the heart via the pulmonary artery to the lungs. So this blood has a lot of carbon dioxide concentration. Then we are saying the left auricle, the left auricle receives oxygenated blood from the lungs. This is the left auricle. It receives via pulmonary vein, it receives oxygenated blood from the lungs. So the blood that's coming from the lungs has more oxygen than the blood that is entering the lungs uh, uh, via the pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery sends blood to the lungs that has a lot of carbon dioxide gas, and then the pulmonary veins brings blood to the brings blood to the heart that has got a lot of oxygen in it. That's why we're going oxygenated blood. We are saying it's okay. Then you are saying the left ventricle has a thick muscle. This is the thick muscle you're saying. This is the left, this is the left ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And we can see this is the muscles. It has got a thick muscles with a purpose. Thick muscles all that pumps blood to all parts of the body. So this the, this muscle here is to pump blood via the otter to, to, to many parts of the body, many, many, tissue, many tissues that are within the body. So the blood will leave the heart via the otter. Now we are seeing that for, in blood circulations, the blood is able to pass through the heart twice. One, it is passing the first time on the right side when this blood has a lot of carbon dioxide gas. We call it deoxy, deoxy, 
generated blood, deoxygenated blood, it's a lot of carbon dioxide, but when it comes back, it is oxygenated blood, there's more oxygen, but this one has got more uh, carbon dioxide on the right side, it goes to the lungs, but when that same blood is coming back from the lungs, has got a lot of, uh, a lot of oxygen. Then we are saying, there are two valves between the auricles. You can see the valves are there, the valves are there. So we are saying there are two valves between the auricles and the and ventricles to prevent blood from flowing back. So to pre prevent blood from flowing back, we have valves that shield blood from going flowing back, just to move forward. These valves are between the auricles and ventricles. They prevent the backflow of blood. The heart is connected to four blood vessels. We are saying the heart is connected to four blood vessels. These main four blood vessels, we can mention them, the vena cava uh, vein, we have the pulmonary artery, then we have the uh, the the otter, which is also the main the main uh, the, the main artery. Then we have the pulmonary vein. So we have pulmonary vein, the otter, pulmonary uh, artery, and the vena cava. So we are saying the heart is connected to four uh, to four vessels, and these are one the vena cava. This one that brings uh, blood from different parts of the body to the heart. And what is vena cava? It carries deoxygenated blood from the body to the right auricle. So it carries the deoxygenated blood from the right auricle to the to, from the right auricle to the right ventricle. That is uh, correct to the right vent to the uh, to, to the right uh, ventricle. That is correct. Then we have the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery is this one that now releases blood to the lungs. So pulmonary artery, it carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs for removal of carbon dioxide and addition of oxygen. So pulmonary artery, this particular vein, will carry the blood, the deoxygenated blood to the lungs for the removal of that carbon dioxide and addition of oxygen. So when the blood, when the oxygen is added in the, in the, in the lungs, when the, when the blood is added in the lungs, and then we find that that blood now will be pumped back to the, to the heart, it will enter the heart via the pulmonary vein. Now, um, we have the pulmonary vein, that is the that. Pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left auricle. So it carries the uh, pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the right to the left auricle. It carries to the left auricle. This is the left auricle. Then from the left auricle, the blood will come to the right ventricle, and the right ventricle will pump that oxygenated blood via the otter to many parts of many parts of the body. Then the last uh, vessel we can discuss is called the otter. We say the otter is the main artery. So it is the main artery and it carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle, this is the left ventricle, to all parts of the body. So blood is pushed in from here through the otter to the many parts of the the, the body uh, tissues that are there. So we have seen that the heart has got those four main uh, vessels that uh, connect the, 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 the heart, the heart with the many body parts, the lungs and so forth. And we are saying lungs are here are important as far as purification of the blood is concerned. We cannot talk of lungs being uh, very much in the circulating, circulating system. So what we need to make one observation we need to make is the heart of a healthy adult. We want to make this observation, it's important. The heart of a healthy adult makes about 72 beats per minute. We are saying beats, is, these are pulse, pulse. So we are saying a heart of a normal person, a healthy person, a heart of a normal person, it beats around 72 beats per minute. Yes, it is 72 bits per minute, uh, or we can say, uh, uh, and you can be able to feel this bit if you hold your wrist or you hold at the chest. You will be able to see how this pulse, how 
the heart is beating, we call them as beating. So we are saying if somebody is healthy, then the normal heartbeat of a healthy person is 72 beats per minute. However, if you are sick, then it can change. Either the beats will go high or they can lower, depending on the sickness you are suffering from. We are also saying pulse can easily be felt on the wrist or on the chest. And another point to note, we are saying heartbeat is a complete relaxation and contraction of the heart muscles. What is a heartbeat? We are trying to say or to define a heartbeat as a complete relaxation and contraction of the heart muscles. So for the beat to be there, the muscles of the heart have to contract and to relax. When that is complete is when we term as a heartbeat. And we have said a caution to note, we are saying not the following, lungs are not part of the circulatory system, but only support the system by purifying the blood. We are saying the lungs are not part of the circulatory system, but they only support the circulatory system by purifying blood, by assisting in the removal of carbon dioxide from the blood and adding oxygen in the blood so that oxygen can go and perform different activities within the body of that living organism. We shall have also just a simple uh, we shall have just a simple diagram to show the flow of blood. We are saying that uh, from the flow of blood, we have this uh, major vein, the major vein we are calling the vena cava. And we are saying right from vena cava, that is how the blood enters the heart. It enters the heart through vena cava. Then we can say from the vena cava, the blood is able to enter now the right auricle. So from vena cava, when you go to the heart, we reach the right auricle. So we go to the first chamber, uh, which is the right auricle. Then when we follow the flow of the blood, now it has flow, the blood has, has, has come in via the vena cava, the main, the main, the main vein, the vena cava, then from the vena cava, this blood now enters the heart, and it enters the heart now, it enters through the right auricle. Now from the right auricle, it goes right to the right ventricle. We have now from right auricle, then to the right uh, ventricle. We can see the flow of blood from vena cava, the main vein, then to the right auricle, that's the first part of the heart. Then it goes to the right ventricle, the second part of the heart down there. Then from the right auricle, it leaves the heart through pulmonary artery. So we can see now the blood from the right ventricle, it is leaving. It is leaving the heart through pulmonary artery. It is heading straight to the lungs. So from pulmonary artery, we can show the flow of blood now to the lungs. And we are saying from the lungs there is where this a lot of carbon dioxide that is being carried in the blood is diffused out. It leaves the body now. The lungs are able now to remove, to purify blood by removing this a lot of carbon dioxide and adding oxygen. Now from the lungs, we find that now the, the, the blood now circulation, the, blood, the flow of the blood is coming back to the heart and it will only enter the heart through pulmonary vein. There is pulmonary vein. Now we see the blood coming back to the heart through pulmonary vein. And when it enters the heart through pulmonary vein, this, uh, it, it enters through the, it, it reaches the another, another third chamber called the left auricle. So the heart will enter the heart via, via the blood will enter the, the heart via the pulmonary vein, the only vein that carries oxygenated blood. Other veins are known for carrying uh, deoxygenated blood. So from the left auricle now, we can see the blood will go to left ventricle. 
the blood will go to the left ventricle and from the uh, yes from the left auricle to the left ventricle then from the left ventricle the blood circulation will go to the altar and we are saying altar is the main artery Otter is the main artery, and we find that, uh, yes, there are many arteries, but we talk of the main and the major one. So artery is the main, uh, is the main, otter is the main artery, that now from artery, the blood is pumped to other parts of the body, and this blood is oxygenated blood. So to go to different parts of the body, now there it will perform the functions, whether it is respiration and so production of energy, and then uh, uh, um, and then the byproducts being carbon dioxide, water, and so forth. But the, now the oxygenated blood will be pumped towards other organs of the body from the otter. So from the otter, we can see now the blood is being pumped to body parts. Then uh, uh, from these body parts, we see now if the blood has to be pumped to go after body parts, it will come back through the vena cava. You remember we started with the vena cava that brought blood to the heart, and then from the body parts again they will bring the blood. Now this process is what we are calling uh, blood. Uh, we are calling blood movement in circulatory system. When we want to know blood circulations. We can have lungs, the heart and body parts. We can maybe have, say these are the lungs. We can have this, we call them lungs. Then uh, we call this is the heart. And then we call here the body parts. We are just trying to show a simple representation of blood circulations. Now, we shall have some arrows. Uh, arrows are showing that uh, this blood that will be pumped to the lungs, then this lungs that will pump blood back to the heart, then from body parts, this blood that will be pumped to the heart, then from the heart, we have blood that will be pumped to the body parts. We can have uh, such a structure, and uh, maybe from this structure we can only mention how the heart, uh, how the blood is entering the heart and is leaving the heart. We are seeing for the, uh, for, for, we are seeing on the right side here, we are seeing uh, pulmonary artery is responsible. We can put our pulmonary artery. is responsible for removing the blood and taking it towards the lungs. Then when this blood that had a lot of carbon dioxide in the lungs, it will now be collected back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. It will enter the heart. Just to be sure. We have pulmonary vein. So pulmonary vein will bring the blood back to the heart, the blood that has a lot of oxygen. Then this blood will leave. It will leave uh, this heart, and it will be oxygenated blood when it's leaving. It will leave through the main, uh, uh, the main uh, artery called the aorta. Aorta back to the to the to different parts of the body, from different parts of the body to the heart, then we shall have our vena cava, the main vein that takes blood back to the heart, the blood that has a lot of carbon dioxide, the vena cava. So we can see this kind of circulations. We have actually shown the three main uh, vessels that are concerned with the uh, blood circulations. There is a pulmonary artery, there is pulmonary vein, there is aorta, there is vena cava, and there are body parts. This, in simple terms, this is how the blood will keep on circulating. Uh, we, we shall just have a few questions that are important for us to know what is transpiring to test our memory. Questions are important, that there. 
to show whether you can re recall. Questions can be there just to show whether your memory, where you are getting anything, or you recall some few things. Maybe um, to start with one question, and this one uh, deals with memory. If you remember the topic that we have covered, it will be easier for you to respond appropriately. Question number one, removal of waste products in the body is called, removal of waste product in the body is called, can call that one question 1E, removal of waste products. Removal of waste products in the body is called. So we are saying such a kind of question is, were you following the topics as you are covering them? Can you exercise simple thing, memory? Can you remember? Removal of waste products in the body is called excretion. Excretion is a process by which the body is able to remove substances that are in excess or unwanted or there are poisonous in the body, then these substances are removed in a process called excretion. We can also have question 1b to tempt our memory. What do we? What process do we call the? Fo do we call the fo the following process? The process of breaking down food, uh, breaking down food particles and releasing energy. What process is that? So we are saying the chemical uh, breakdown of food to release energy, and we know it is not only energy; it's energy, carbon dioxide, and water. Uh, such a process, we call it respiration. So we are saying respiration is a chemical uh, process whereby a chemical breakdown of food particles to release energy, water and carbon dioxide, we call that one respiration. We can also advance and look into question C, and uh, we shall come to circulations because we are doing circulation system. All organs involved in blood circulation make up the dash. All organs involved in blood circulations make up the dash. All organs involved in blood circulation involved in blood circulation make up make up the dash want to know what they make up they make they make up the dash want to know these many organs that are involved in blood circulations how do we refer them to we call them blood uh, we call them the blood, they make up the blood circulation system. They make up the blood, that's the answer, the blood circulation system. So what we are saying, the organs that are involved in purification of blood, the organs that are involved, how the blood circulates from where to where, these organs, when we bring them together, then what they are doing is what we are calling, in a nutshell, blood circulatory system. Then um, we have another question that uh, we can also, we can have question two. We have heard question A, B, and C. Question two is uh, what the flow of blood to and fro the heart is called what? That is, how do you call the flow of blood? The flow of blood to, to, the flow of blood to and fro. Meaning the flow of blood 
to the heart, and from the heart is called what? Is called. Here we just want to know what do we call the flow of blood to the body and from the body. What term can we use to call the blood that is flowing to the heart and flowing from the heart? Such a simple process we call it blood circulation. Blood circulation is a term used to describe the flow of blood to the heart and from the heart. The term that is used to describe that is blood circulation. We can also have our question to see, and uh, our question to see reads: um, Chemical produced, chemical produced by white blood cells, which fight and destroy germs, are called. What name do we give to the chemicals? What name do we give to the chemicals produced by white uh, blood cells to fight the? Uh, to fight and destroy germs, to fight any invading germ, what, what name do we give to that particular chemical? We are saying we have white blood cells, and white blood cells are known for fighting any invaders, any foreign germs that are trying to enter the body. It is the responsibility of the white blood cells to fight these germs. Now we are asking, what kind of chemical that is produced by these white blood cells to fight these germs. What kind of a chemical? So we are saying uh, chemical produced by the white blood cells to fight and destroy germs is called, is called the antibodies. The antibodies are produced by the white blood cells to fight the antigens, to fight the germs, to fight the attackers that are trying to attack the body. How do these white blood, cells f uh, white blood cells fight? They fight by engulfing this particular charm, engulfing these red blood cells. We shall subdivide, we are going to, define, to discuss that one in deep when we shall even say there are other cells that are produced called the T cells, the killer cells. We shall come to that. But let us just know that there's a chemical that is produced by white blood cells called the, the, the antibodies, and these antibodies are there to find antigens, the germs that are trying to attack the body. Then uh, um, we have another question. We can have question 2A, this 2B. We can have question 2C to test our memory. Question 2C is arteries and veins are joined together by arteries and veins are joined together by tiny blood vessels called dash. I'll repeat the questions. We are saying arteries. Arteries and veins. Arteries and veins are joined together. by tiny blood vessels called dash. Here, it is also a memory. Uh, we had said that uh, there are some arteries that are responsible for connecting the arteries. We have some vessels that are responsible for, co for connecting the arteries and and the veins, and we said they are single-celled. They are very tiny and minute, so we want to know the name of these very tiny blood vessels that connect the two. And we say those vessels are responsible for uh, diffusion, of, diffusion of carbon dioxide, maybe to the veins and so forth, and diffusion of, and diffusion of oxygen to the arteries. We had said these tiny vessels that are responsible for connecting the arteries and the veins are called capillaries. Capillaries are minute. They are responsible, the, they are responsible for, uh, for digesting. They, they digest the food and other mineral salts. They are able to pass them through the arteries and they are able to 
diffuse out the carbon dioxide to the veins and then the veins will be able to carry this uh, carbon dioxide gas to the lungs and the lungs will be able to move out. So we are saying capillaries are a point of interconnections between the veins and the arteries. And then uh, we can also have another question, question three, to test our memory. And question three uh, reads, what are the functions? What, why is it that the, we have the functions of valve found in near the heart and veins? Why is it that the heart has valves? What is the need for the heart having valves and also the veins having valves? We had said that the arteries do have pulse. And if you want to prove whether there is a, uh, you have an artery within your, ha or your hand, you touch at the wrist, and if you press, you will find that pulse, or the beat, the beat will be there. But we are saying veins, they don't have the pulse. So we are saying the functions of valves found near the, within the heart and veins, what are the functions of this valve? The appropriate answer to that question is why the heart has uh, the valves, we had seen the structure of the heart. We had shown where the valves are located, especially uh, when you see when the when the when the blood when the blood is flowing out from the heart through the pulmonary artery. There are valves when the heart is flowing out through the major major artery, the aorta. There are valves. What is the responsibility of these particular valves? The appropriate answer is the valves. The valves do prevent the blood from flowing backwards. So the blood has to move forward ever and backward not. Also, we can have to test our memory. Another question we can ask ourselves, how many times, how many times does the blood pass through the heart before leaving, leaving it? We have the heart. We are being asked, how many times does the blood flow through the heart before leaving it? The appropriate answer to a, such a question is the blood uh, flows through the heart twice. One, it will flow through the heart when it comes through the vena cava. It comes through the vena cava, that is carbon dioxide. Uh, the blood that, has, uh, that is rich in carbon dioxide gas, then it is pumped to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. So that's, that's the first passage. And then from the lungs, the heart comes back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. When it gets into the heart through the pulmonary vein, this particular kind of blood has a lot of oxygen. Remember when the blood went to the lungs, there was a removal of, uh, of this carbon dioxide and addition of oxygen into the blood. So when the blood comes back the second time into the heart, it is oxygenated blood because it has a lot of oxygen. Then it is pumped through the aorta. It is pumped to, through the aorta to many parts of the body and that kind of blood, it has a lot of oxygen when it's being pumped out. So the, the blood passes twice through the heart. It comes in when it has a lot of carbon dioxide, it is pumped to the, to the lungs, then it comes in when it has a lot of oxygen, then it pumps to many different parts of the body. We can have um, what we can have a term that describes such a situation. One complete relaxation and contraction of the heart is called what? We are want to see what is this? A situation where there is one complete relaxation and contraction of the heart muscles. How how do we call it? If the heart completely relaxes and contracts, that what do we term that one to be? We term that one to be a complete heart beat, or we call it pulse. So a pulse is a situation. Pulse is a situation where the blood. A pulse is a situation whereby the heart contracts and relaxes completely. Then we call that one is a single complete pulse. So it is a pulse or heart beat. We can call it heart beat, one heart beat, or one pulse. And we had said a normal human being who is not sick, your heartbeat has to beat 72 times. If it is above 72, then maybe note that you are sick, you might be running. If you are running, the heartbeat has to increase so that you can be able to take in more oxygen to enable you get more power for running. But uh, if the heartbeat is below the 72, 
then uh, there might be a problem. You might be sick. You need maybe medical attention. Then uh, another question that uh, we it's free to respond to. Can name three main name three main substances transported by plasma. We had mentioned plasma as part of the blood components. When we are dealing with the components of blood, we had mentioned plasma, we had mentioned red blood cells, we had mentioned white blood cells and blood cells. But now we are limiting ourselves to plasma. Now the question here is, what name the main substances that are transported by plasma? We know plasma is watered and so forth. What are the main substances that are transported through plasma? The appropriate answers, the three main substances that are transported through plasma, one is digested food food that has been been digested and has dissolved it is transported through plasma second what is transported through plasma is the waste products products that are no longer required in the body they will be transported through plasma and also the hormones hormones will also be transported through plasma to different parts of the body as they are required so hormones are transported through plasma Waste products are transported through plasma, whether they are mineral salts, whether they are, they are transported through plasma, and we are also, waste products are also transported through plasma, salts and so forth. And then uh, um, question number nine, as we wind up, we are saying the main artery and uh, vein, the main artery and vein respectively are, we want just to mention, yes, veins are there are located within the body of a human being. Yes, arteries are there, they are located within the human body. We are saying it's normal that uh, most veins, they normally transport blood back to the heart. And most of the arteries, they transport oxygenated blood from the heart, with the exception of the, some of the, 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 the pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery, that those are the only difference. But here we want to talk about what is the main artery the main artery and the main vein, respectively. So I say the main artery is the otter. I repeat again, the main artery is the otter that is responsible for removing blood from the heart, from the heart to different parts of the body. It pumps, it, the, 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 we know that there is what you call the, uh, the left, there is a left ventricle, left ventricle pumps blood, left ventricle pumps blood, from the heart via the otter to different parts of different parts of yes to different parts of the body. So the main artery is the otter, and the main vein. It is the major vein that brings blood from different parts of the body back to the heart. And we had mentioned that one to be vena cava. Vena cava is the main vein that brings blood from different parts of the body back to the heart. Then the that the same blood is pumped to the heart to be oxygenated and for carbon dioxide to be diffused out. So we have done some kind of practice. We have exercised our memory to recall what this uh, blood uh, circulatory system is all about. Now we want to take some few minutes to know that uh, we want to take some few minutes that are concerned about organ uh, uh, we talk of organ uh, donations, ethics and organ donation. Let us uh, advance. What happens is we had mentioned something to do with stem cells. We said the people in laboratories can be able to nurture and to bring up stem cells in the different ways and so forth. We are aware of organ donations. People who have no eyes, other people maybe can donate their eyes to other people. We don't know if people feel that maybe they, are going, they might have an accident. People might go ahead and sign that. In a case I have an accident, let me not be buried with my eyes if my eyes can assist other people elsewhere. People, people can freely donate their organs to assist others. But the question here is, it comes up with the question of ethics. How can we say it is correct for us to, to, to donate our body organs? Some of our body organs, when we donate, it will imply that we have to die first before we donate. So can we accept to die to save others? But there are some body parts that you donate and you cannot die. For instance, somebody can survive 
uh, quite well with one kidney. So if somebody has failure in kidneys, one can donate a kidney to assist the other. But what rules are there and regulations that govern people when it comes to organ donation? There are people who are involved in an accident, they die. Now, people who are involved in an accident, they die. Maybe traditionally and ethically, people can say, let, me, let us bury these people with their organs. But if maybe we are reasonable enough, we shall say, these organs will no longer be valuable to these people who are dead. What about if we take their organs and try to support people who are still alive? There are thousands of people, it is estimated close to 100,000 of people, who are in line waiting for different organ donations. They have their organs, but they have different failures and they want to be assisted. Should we continue burying people with important organs while we could have used the same, so, same, same organs to assist the other? That one now brings up a hot debate. Such a debate we talk of ethics and organ donation. Now, we have covered a lot to do with the circulatory system. We have mentioned a lot of things to do with the heart, how the blood flows from where to where, we have shown the, how the blood circulates. We have said that's okay. We have seen, we have tried to recall and to respond to questions that deal with the blood to show that we can be able to remember some things that are important when it deals with the blood. We have known what oxygenated blood is. We have seen how oxygen flows, how oxygen is added back into, how oxygen is added back into the blood and how carbon dioxide is removed. Now, we are saying that people through stem cells, they can be able to come up and to bring to, na to nurture some organs. I've mentioned about kidney. When we talk of kidney, you can donate a kidney and you don't die. You can still breathe well and exist very well with a single kidney. You donate another kidney to somebody who is in need. Maybe he has total failure of the two kidneys, you are alive. But there are other organs when you donate and then it implies you are either dead. I had mentioned that to the people have accidents. Should we bury these people with all important organs because they are dead, or should their organs be removed to assist the other? Now, such a question brings up what we call ethics and organ donation. Now, in our next lesson, we shall start on this ethics and organ donation to see the rules and regulations that will govern governments and institutions when they are dealing with organ donation. Thank you.